Right, well, welcome to this uh, Facebook Live. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Faithwire editor, uh, Carly Hoyleman. And uh, Carly, we have been just covering so many pro-life stories and, and stories about abortion uh, that are going on lately. And it kind of all started with the, with the New York abortion law. Um, we had a huge reaction on our website from, from that story, uh, mostly because I think the crowd reaction was kind of so creepy and that sort of launched everybody into an opinionated reaction. Um, but we've seen this trend continue. Of course, the Virginia law with Governor Northam with his kind of shock comments about what to do with babies once they're born, not even late term, um, even once they're born. And then we had a story uh, a few days ago, Carly, where it was um, a couple who were told that their child were going to have challenging health issues and they then decide, talked about their decision to actually abort the child. So tell us a little bit about that story and then the, the reaction that our readers had after seeing it. So we did this story on a British couple and it was particularly heartbreaking because they were decently young, pregnant with their first child. Uh, they did some in vitro after experiencing fertility issues. And after all of that effort at 22 weeks, they made the tragic decision of aborting their child a baby girl, because they were told she would have spina bifida. Um, and their, the reasoning they gave to me was the most heartbreaking part. Um, they, they said that ethically, morally, this was the most compassionate choice. And it just, it breaks your heart because you, you truly want to believe these parents. And that's what the pro-abortion camp uses. That's their rhetoric. They say, this isn't an ideal option. You know, this is heartbreaking for parents, but it's the most humane thing to do because no child deserves to live with a disability. Of course, what you get from that is people with disabilities are, are lesser. They don't have the same degree of, of dignity as healthy human beings. So, um, and of course, we know that that's not true. So we got so many responses from parents, mostly mothers, who bravely chose life even when they were given kind of the same grim prognosis and... Some of those children ended up with crippling disabilities, and some of them were perfectly healthy. And it just goes to show also that God's in control, we're not, and, and he has the ultimate say. And ultimately, we need, our, our job is not to decide whether our children live or die, but whether we're going to accept what God gives us. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, just to, to um, uh, expand on what Carly was saying there, the readers reacted in such a way, you guys did, uh, to the story, we saw lots of people who have gone through this very similar example uh, of what this couple had gone to. And in many cases, the doctors had actually advised them similarly. But as Carly said, they decided to choose a different route and to trust God and to have the baby. And, um, and so we've decided to actually uh, chronicle these people's stories and let them sort of tell the story. And Carly sort of has laid that all out for you in a, in a multi-part series. And so that's going on right now at faithwire.com. If you go to the top of the nav bar there, um, you can see where it says the life is beautiful series. And, um, and it really is, uh, I think hardly a trend in the culture now where you see, as you mentioned, you say that the doctors will, will, you know, uh, give these people, um, the option as a, as a tough choice in a, in a, you know, and just a choice that nobody, nobody wants. Uh, the question that I would say is, well, why is it a choice that nobody wants? Uh, and I think, are we not, Carly, kind of missing out a chance for God to work mightily in our lives when we trust that this is the child that he had planned for us uh, and instead choose to sort of take matters into our own hands? Yeah, you nailed it. And, and any one of these parents will tell you the exact same thing. They'll say that choosing life for their child, for some of them, abortion was never an option. For some of them, it was something they, they considered seriously, um, but they'll all tell you that choosing life was the best decision they ever made because the, of the joy and, and the growth in their faith that that child has brought to their family. It's just, it's hard to ignore. When you read those stories, you see those smiling faces of the children. It's, it's the most powerful testimony. Yeah, what were you feeling, Carly, when you were getting... Of these stories from the parents and seeing all the images that they're saying, what stood out to you? What is what is what really kind of tugged at your heartstrings as you were putting these stories together? The mom, everything. I probably <laughs> cried like <laughs> every at every you know thing in my inbox. It was like the tears just kept yeah. coming. These, 
I mean, just amazing, amazing stories. And, uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm a mom, so maybe I'm a sucker for that, but I, I think that's just a natural human response to these stories. And, and a lot of these moms will tell you that, you know, their people will make the decision to abort out of fear of the unknown. And, and like those parents in the UK out of genuine concern for the well-being of their child. But as Christians, we're told that perfect love casts out fear and, and we're not to be afraid in those situations. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Carly, I mean, we're seeing this trend in a bunch of different areas, the devaluing of human life. And I think it's something that we Christians need to be standing on and need to be speaking out about. We saw the bookstore owner in New York, John Speed, we've covered a few times now for the stand he took after the New York uh, abortion law where he closed his store for a day. Uh, then he, we just re- just published uh, recently this week uh, him standing in front of the city council and saying that, you know, we need to, have, begging them to make their city a sanctuary city for the unborn. And I thought that was such a poignant poignant speech from from uh, John there. But it's necessary now for us to stand up because of the trend. Like, we can't sit here silently. You look at what's happening with Down syndrome. And uh, I guess it's, I think it's Iceland, where they were boasting uh, of the fact that they were able to eradicate it, which really is not possible, right? It's, it's just, we're killing all the people with Down syndrome. And that's shockingly sad. But but um, would you say that it's now is sort of the time, it's sort of a watershed moment for the for the pro life movement to sort of take action and 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 respond to all this uh, devaluing of human life that's going on? Absolutely, and and there is a place for the angered debate that we've seen surrounding the abortion argument, and and that's certainly helpful. Um, but but equally helpful and and powerful are these stories that we just need to keep bringing to the forefront because it's not all about yes the scientific arguments are very important the moral ethical arguments are very important but something that the progressive abortion movement does really well is employ these stories of experience and and that's just the most powerful thing and if we can communicate that joy that comes with choosing life I think that's even more powerful than the other strategies. That's fantastic. And if you're out there and you have a story to share, feel free to send it to us at contact at faithwire.com. Uh, we would love to hear it. And we would love to share your story and to do more of these series and to show how people all across the country and the world are actually valuing life and, and, and doing it and, and valuing it and, and supporting it and championing it, saving it when it's tough. Cause, cause that's the time when God can be most glorified in those tough situations. So Uh, So check out Carly's series. It's fantastic. Life is beautiful. It's up on faithwire.com right now. Uh, Carly, uh, thanks for joining us. Sure. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who shared from the bottom of my my heart, just amazing stories. And thanks. Thanks for entrusting us with that and and just being such a, a powerful testament to the beauty of choosing life. All right. Great stuff. Thanks so much, Carly. Absolutely.